Chancellor, I present to you the Baroness Susan Greenfield CBE as eminently worthy to receive the award of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa. With the authority conferred on me by the university, I admit you to the degree of doctor of the university honoris causa. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much, Orator, for that very um, generous, um, generous speech. Um, I've been asked just to say a few words, and I think what I'd like to say before anything is not about me, it's about you, which is to say how wonderful a day this must be for you and for your families and your friends, because I remember only too well the hard work that goes into getting a degree, um, the times when things don't seem to be working, where you feel disillusioned, where you don't seem to understand things, where you look at people who are outside, already in jobs, seeming to have a good life, and you're there stuck swatting and trying to study. But isn't it worth it? Now you can look back on that, and all that hard work you've put in, all the support you've had from your family and friends, this is what it's about. Today is the celebration of that. So many, many Congratulations, not just to you, the graduates, but also to your friends and family. Brilliant and well done. And even the sun is shining for you. So what more could you want? Yeah. But, but, the adventure is just beginning. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do with the rest of your life? Now, what's exciting to be in your generation is you and certainly your children will have a one in three chance of living to be 100. Just think about it. So whereas people like my mum wouldn't think beyond the first 50 years of their life, you can. And what are you going to do with your life? What are you, and how are you going to shape an environment so that other people who aren't scientists and technologists, who perhaps don't have the benefits that you now have, how are you going to shape an environment that is a technological one to make their world as optimal and as beneficial where they can stretch themselves as never before? Because in our very privileged society, we are freed up from hunger, from being cold, from being without homes, from, in many cases, being without any pain. And many people around the world, sadly, cannot say that. We can. So it gives us the opportunity to look beyond those immediate needs of survival and comfort and to think, well, how am I going to stretch myself as a person? What does it mean to be me? What does it mean to be you? You're a unique individual. And for the 100,000 years that human beings have stalked the planet, no one has got a mind like yours, nor were they ever again. And even if you're a clone, an identical twin, no one is the same as you. Your heart, your lungs, your livers, yeah, they're the same. Your brains are not, because your brains are interacting every moment you're alive with the environment. And the environment is leaving its mark on your brain, and you're interpreting what you experience in the light of what has already gone. This is the beauty of the human mind. It's the birthright of the human species to develop a unique perspective on the world. Now, let's think about that world. We're living in a world, say, with nanotechnology, uh, the science of the very, very small, where you'll have devices that can break the firewall of, of the body. We're living in a world of um, where marvelous advances in medicine are enabling you not just to live a long time, but um, to have a higher quality of life than any other generation would have had. And of course, as we've just heard from the orator, we have the digital age, which brings with it so much excitement and power, but at the same time where we need to, to harness it. And uh, the orator mentioned mind change. Why did I call it that? Because I think it's comparable to climate change. Climate change is controversial. It's unprecedented, it's global, and it breaks down into lots of different problems. There's no one problem of climate change. I'd like to suggest to you that the issues of the digital technologies and how they're creating a parallel environment for your brain is unprecedented, is global, is certainly controversial, and is multifaceted. It breaks down into issues such as social networking and um, aspects of empathy and identity, breaks down into gaming and attention and addiction and aggression, breaks down into search engines and how you'll differentiate information from knowledge and how you'll use that information to turn it into wisdom. All these aspects need thinking about. 
What kind of people are going to help other people join up the dots and make the most of this? Well, it's you. It's you because you have the great privilege now of a degree in engineering or science or technology, which puts you in a position of great responsibility. It's not just that you are going to have perhaps a wonderful, filling life, but that life should also be at least considered in the light of helping other people to create an environment. It's always easy to say what we don't want, but now we have the huge luxury of saying what we do want. And I think what's marvelous about being a graduate at your stage in your area is that you are now in a fabulous position to start asking the really big questions and best of all, delivering the answers. So congratulations once again, and thank you so much to the university for this great honor. Thank you so much.